Political parties taking part in the governorship election scheduled for November the 16th in Undo State will be going in for their primaries from April the 6th to the 27th. This is in accordance with the timetable of activities for the exercise released by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in September 2023. As the date draws near, political parties are intensifying preparations as aspirants traverse the nook and cranny of the state consulting with stakeholders and party faithful in a bid to secure support for their aspiration. The tenure of the incumbent governor, Loki Ayedatua, who took over power following the demise of his boss, Governor Rotimi Akiridolu, will come to an end on February the 23rd, 2025. While well, joining us to discuss the preparations for the governorship election in the state, his plans for the state and PDP's chance in the race is a PDP governorship aspirant in the state, Bamidili Akingbui. Welcome to Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, good afternoon, presenter. Good afternoon. good afternoon to you all. Well, let's start, you know, with your plans and vision for Undo State. Why do you want to be the next governor of the state? Mm, I believe it's enough time for them to realize that uh, we should stop using teachers and lawyers and uh, somebody that doesn't know how to think about how to how, how to think about how they can create wealth in the state we should use somebody that can that can that can create wealth in the state and uh, do something good for the state so they've been using teachers they've been using uh, uh, conventional politicians to 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 run the state so i'm a businessman and i'm an entrepreneur for almost 40 years and i've been doing good i've been doing well in my businesses so I think it's the right time for them to use somebody that can think out of the box and use the resources and the mineral resources and everything that we have in the state to put it down and at least develop it. Thank you. Well, we'll take a quick pause from this interview to go to the State House in Kaduna where the governor of the state is right now re re receiving the 137 students that have recently been freed from captivity. the bus they will go in now to meet with the governor they are neatly dressed even though earlier pictures when they were released from captivity showed them looking very tired and very dirty but it's obvious that they've now been well taken care of and hopefully they will receive some form of rehabilitation going forward and we do know that there was a bit of a discrepancy on the exact amount of uh, children that were abducted versus the amount that were printed as released. We are either way very happy to see them being uh, ushered out of the bus and hopefully reunited with their families and healthy and uh, you know mentally stable. It seems like the federal government has been working quite hard to make sure that these girls are returned to their families, um, whichever teachers were taken along with them. Um, and it looks like uh, we will be seeing more of this feed as the day progresses and of course these parents are uh, will be welcoming their children uh, after there will be um, I'm guessing some kind of a speech and a press conference in order to uh, maybe explain exactly what exactly happened and um, how how these students were freed how their state of mind is and where you know Kaduna State goes from here so uh, live footage of parents uh, or the chill school children that were abducted coming off of a school bus uh, and ushered into a hall in order to uh, meet their parents and other state officials who are officially welcoming them. And just like Jimmy Talk about mentioned earlier, they do not look as disheveled as they were when they were originally um, brought back. They seem calm and clean and uh, hopefully in, in good spirits. So this seems to be about the third busload of children that are coming uh, out. Well, certainly, according to a statement from the DHQ, the rescued hostage is comprised of 76 females and 61 males aged between 8 and 15. 
And of course, in the statement, they said a total of 137 students were rescued, contrary to reports that 287 children were abducted by bandits on March the 6th. The children were reportedly rescued in Zamfara State in the early hours of Sunday through the joint efforts of the military and local authorities. And of course, right now what we're seeing is the children being handed over to the Kaduna State Government for further action. In some few minutes, the children will be meeting with the Kaduna State Governor, Governor Ubasan. And of course, there are questions as to what means were taken in order to release, uh, safely release these children. As we know, our government has come out to say that they are not paying any kidnappers any ransom. Um, according to some government, government spokespeople, it took a lot of back channel engagement in order to secure the release of the students in, uh, on the 7th in a dusty town in Kaduna State. They all seem fine, all 137 of them. It seems like they have all left the buses and everyone is scrambling into the hall to get their first images and pictures of exactly what is going on. There will, of course, be a press conference about the release of these students, and we will go back to that as the day transpires. But back to our interview with PDP governorship aspirant, uh, Bamidele Akingboye. Thank you so much for being patient and waiting uh, with us as we receive that breaking news. But you were talking about what makes you uh, the best candidate uh, for the PDP for your state. Uh, can you please continue? As I said earlier on, I said uh, at this particular junction, we need somebody that can think out of the box and create wealth in Ondo State. We've been using conventional politicians, teachers to run the affairs of Ondo State since 1976. And uh, if you must know, governance is about business. It's about you taking care of the people of the state. We have more than enough mineral resources, human resources, and the uh, people that can work for the state perfectly. But the, the government in power and those that have been under the mantra of the state, they don't really do it well. So that is why I think I, I'm the best person to do it because uh, I've been doing something good with my life and uh, my businesses. Well, let me just follow up on that. You know, as a private citizen, I'm wondering what contributions you have made to Undo State's development, you know, as a businessman and as an entrepreneur so far. Yeah, uh, the business I'm doing, I'm into dredging, and you know about dredging, you have to walk in the water. So all my staff, at least 99% of my staff are from Ondo State because we are always walking on the water. So that is it. And uh, if you find out uh, when the COVID came in, I, I was the leading aspirant contesting then that goes around the state giving each of the people, the local government money, and doing personal donation to them to take care of them. And the, I can't be counting those I've sent to schools, to universities, those that I'm paying their bills in the hospitals, those that I'm taking care of their personal needs. These are my personal things I keep to myself, but the people from those state, they know me very well and they know that I've been taking care of them. Well, hopefully you won't be overburdened now that you are running for a uh, governor of the state as well as taking care of all the other uh, obligations that you currently take care of. But let's speak about the PDP in particular. Um, there are seven other aspirants uh, vying for the ticket. Uh, what makes you stand out from the rest? And as why uh, did you all refuse to go for a consensus arrangement? Uh, as I said, the six other contestants are still the same conventional politician in the state. It cannot work for us. We need a businessman to under the mantle of that state. We need somebody that can think out of the box and think of how to create wealth in the state. And that is why I believe I'm the rightful person, because the six of them are still the same conventional politician we've been talking about that has been running the affair of the state since 1976. This cannot work. So 
I'm the best among them. And uh, about the uh, con concern uh, to, to give us a concession for among the prior parties, uh, we tried it and uh, it doesn't work. So we are going to go for our primaries. We are all preparing for the primaries. We try to put ourselves together and talk to each other. Nobody's tried to step down. And I even offer myself to step down if we compare each other to what we can do, if they can beat my record. I will step down, but uh, they said they don't, they don't want to accept it. So we are going to meet in the primaries. Well, I like your confidence, you know, and of course you keep harping on the fact that you're a businessman and you believe you are the better candidate. But I'd like us to focus on issues. For instance, security in Undo State. You know your state has witnessed quite some number of violent crimes, you know, in the past. What would you do to turn things around? Talk about the educational sector, the healthcare sector. What exactly, can you be specific, give us your agenda for Undo State if indeed you do get to become governor of the state? On the security, those that are running around and causing havoc in the state, they are not ghosts. There are people we can fish out and the people of the state can easily fish them out. And we are going to pop up the Amateku that uh, Akire Dolu have uh, already put in place to make sure the security is going to be tight in uh, Ondo State. And on education, if you must remember that Ondo State is one of the best states that we go to school, we read, and uh, we are going to put a lot of emphasis back for us to gain our pride back in Ondo State. As I said earlier on, as a businessman, I have a lot of ideas I'm going to put on ground that is going to drive the economy of that state. And our IGR is going to increase because there's a lot of things I've been planning on for the past 21 years I've been contesting in this state. And I stay put in my party. I never leave because I believe in PDP. So it is right time for me to get this ticket and I will start practicing what I have been practicing for us to move on in this state. And Mr. Kingboye, please, uh, we have quite a bit of time on the show. So we're going to give you um, the time to expound on some of these ideas that you have, um, that you have been working on for 20 some odd years. But um, apart from security, I want to talk about food security, stomach infrastructure. We know that there's hunger in the land. Ondo State is no exception. Um, the current economic crisis the country is uh, battling under. What are some of your ideas in order to boost uh, food production, maybe take care of the livelihoods of the farmers who are having issues going to and from their farms and also maybe uh, food distributions? What, what ideas do you have? And like I said, please feel free to expound. We have quite a bit of time. Okay. Uh, first of all, I think what I'm going to look at is for us to bring the pride of Ondo State from where I come from. I came, I came from Okitogopa. That is my local government where we have the oil palm. In 1976, the Malaysia, they came to Okitogopa to pick the seed of our palms in Ondo State. Today, if you check the record, they are number one across the globe because they, they export from Malaysia more than seven, six point seven or eight million billion dollars on palm farm products. So we are going to revive this. We can plant cassava also. We plant cassava for us to, to, to feed the state. And the terrain of Ondo State, we are the only state in Nigeria that, that has from Savannah to the Atlantic. We can plant rice. And my government is going to have at least 10,000 hectares of land in each of the senatorial districts to plant rice. In 2000, I could emphasize on this, I brought 40 Chinese from China to assist Obasanjo's government. And when these Chinese came to Nigeria, they said, what we need to do in my state in particular is for us to build an institute called Rice Institute. You don't need to go to school to learn this. You can easily learn how to plant rice within six months. And they also told me that within six months of us investing into rice plantation in Ondo State, we start feeding Ondo State. Within a year, we start feeding part of Nigeria. Within four years, we start feeding the entire Nigeria in rice production. And within eight years, we start exporting. If you look at the records today, we are using over five, six, seven billion dollars to bring rice into Nigeria. So I have a lot of ideas on this. If it is only the rice uh, plantation that I focus my, 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 my agenda on in the state, we are going to make a lot of money from there and we are going to be able to feed uh, people in Africa, also in Nigeria, also in my state. 
So that is it. Now, I'm wondering how confident you are, you know, that your party, the PDP, can overthrow the ruling party in your state, which is the APC, in the next election, especially with the incumbent governor also running for another term in office. Are you concerned, perhaps, that your party may suffer the same fate that the PDP has suffered at the national level and, of course, the resultant disarray that it's, it's in at the moment? Uh, at present, I believe PDP has come together in those states and we're going to work as one. Any of us that wins the primaries will be the candidate for the party and we're all going to work together. As I speak today, the people of Ondo State, they are all agitating that they don't want APC anymore. And that is why I'm contesting. And for sure, I pray to God that I'm going to pick up the ticket. They are going to work for me and I'm going to be the next governor of Ondo State. And I'm going to do what nobody has ever seen in Ondo State before. Because as I said, I have a plan for that state. But without me being the governor, my ideas might not be out there. But immediately I'm the governor, my promise is that within six months of my running the rail in Ondo State, the whole Nigeria will see exactly what I'm talking about. It's not rocket science. I'm going to do what the people want. And Ondo State, as we know it, is the sunshine state. Uh, could you give us more uh, information about what makes Ondo State so uh, pivotal within the Nigerian uh, ecosystem? Yeah, it's a sunshine state because uh, uh, we have the longest uh, coastline that has never been touched, which we believe that uh, with my government we are going to start it by improving the, 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 the coastline. And uh, I was discussing with somebody yesterday that you realize that uh, the blessing of Dangote Refinery and the Indominido companies and the, the seaports that is situated in uh, Leki, Bejuleki, and even the, DC, uh, sea, uh, the DC, uh, seaport and the new airport they are building, it is on those states that is going to benefit from this because they don't have any financial center that is going to take care of everything they will be doing there. They don't have a, a, a commercial center that is going to take care of everything. Recreation center, they don't have it. Even housing, they don't have it. It's just 30 kilometers away from Ondo State. And we focus in building something special, a, 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 a classy environment for people that is going to work in Lagos State to live in Ondo State. A lot of revenue will be generated. And secondly, if you find out from anybody, they will tell you we are sitting on the second largest deposit of bitumen across the globe. It has not been touched. These are my ideas. These are things I'm going to put in place that money will start rolling into those state and people will start moving into those state to start working in those state for them to make and their living on a daily basis. Now, I know that you've recently spoken out in favor of zoning, you know, saying that all political parties should pick their candidates from Undo South. But I'm wondering why you know, candidates or aspirants usually harp on zoning instead of merit. Shouldn't you know, the best hand be what is required for the job instead of where you come from? Does it even boost unity in the state? Should that be an issue that we are still focusing on in 2024? I did not subscribe to that because uh, I don't really believe in zoning. The best brain to take the mantle of Ondo State. And as I always tell anybody that cares to hear that the best brain to take the mantle of even this country we are. We have a lot of brilliant and excellent women being that can run the affair of Nigeria. A lot of brilliant women being that can run the affair of Ondo State. I always believe that the best brain should run the affair of any country or any state. That is my own belief. And that is why I believe I'm qualified for this position I'm looking for. Because among the lot, I'm the best brain. Among the lot, I'm the person that can drive the economy of Ondo State to at least a place that people will, sit, will start saying that at this state is working. It is not recursive, as I said. And it is just for us to take the right peg and put in the right hole. I don't even need to think about new ideas in Ondo State anymore. They've made a lot of mistakes. So I just have to start putting the right peg in the right hole and things will start working. Do you or any of your party members have any fears about going into this uh, governorship race in terms of uh, the dispensation of uh, justice in, in terms of the voting and uh, the way everything will be organized? Uh, are these any of the fears that have been discussed and how are they, how do you plan to mitigate uh, 
some of these errors that tend to happen as uh, elections are conducted? Uh, we can see from the past elections that uh, things work well. From my side, I, uh, things work well. And uh, today, nobody can steal anybody's vote in this country anymore. People are getting wiser and wiser every day. And I believe the election we are going to run in Ondo State in November is going to be the, the best election ever run in this country. You guys will watch out for it. You will see it. There won't be any chaos because they want somebody they really love in the state. And they will vote quietly and the election will be well done. No, I'm just wondering, you know, let's become futuristically. If you do win the election and become the next governor of the state, will you be continuing with the project of your predecessor or will the resources that have been committed so far, you know, become a waste, considering the fact that you seem to be a bit cynical of all the teachers and the lawyers, you know, that have been in power in the last couple of years? On those state is going to be the first state that's going to pass a bill immediately we come that there won't be any abandoned project anymore in that state. If a project is being done by the past government, we will only review it and continue with it. Immediately I come in as a governor, it's part of what I'm thinking of. All projects that have been abandoned, we review it, and the one that the, 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 the governor that, that he left before, before we came in, we can continue it. And if I'm leaving after four years or after eight years, the law, we also say continue what I've done. Nobody, we abandon any project again, because that is part of the problem we are facing in this country. Well, it seems that uh, the race is going to be quite an interesting one in Ondo State. Is there any more that you would like to share with our audience about what you bring to the table and for your constituency? As I said, Without me having the platform, I can't really do what I have in my mind. I've been an entrepreneur for 40 years. I've traveled around the globe. I know what it takes to make a state run. When I get there, I will come back here after six months and prove to you that I said so that I'm going to make Ondo State be on its foot, and her foot, sorry, and uh, Ondo State will run 247. Ondo State will never sleep again, and the sun will shine again. You know, well, finally, just before I let you go, you know, you've, you've said a lot of things in this interview, but we know that politicians are known for sweet talk. You know, you've said that within six months you will turn the state around, the state will outstand the world, but we've heard all that before. You know, so why should we believe you? What makes you believable? What makes us so sure? What makes the people that will vote for you? What, sh what should give them that confidence that indeed you will do all what you have said that you will do? I have passion for my people. I love my people. And I'm coming to serve them. I'm coming to take tears of their eyes. God has done everything I wanted in my life for me. I want to come and give back. And until I, that is done, before I will know that I'm fulfilled in my life. And I keep on telling everybody that cares to know that if I want to go to Ondo State to do what I think, I feel like doing, if it's not the will of God, I should not get there. I want to do the will of God in those state because people are dying, people are crying. It doesn't take anything. There's a lot of money sitting down in the coffer of the government every month. Where do they put this money? This money is supposed to be meant for the people of Ondo State. So I'm going to do the will of God. Put your Bible or your Quran in the right hand today and put 200 naira in your hand. People will choose to choose the paper. They will not even believe, they don't even believe that there is God anymore. But there are still some people that have the heart of angel, the heart of God. To work for God, I'm going to work for God. I want to work in the marketplace to bring people back to Christ and to bring people back to God. And that is why I'm agitating for 21 years. I did not get tired. I've been sponsoring myself for, the, for 21 years. I don't work for government. I've been doing my personal business. I run every four, four years, and they keep on telling me, it is, uh, it is not your turn. It has not been zoned to your zone. My mother is from Owo. My dad is from Oktopa. I'm from the north. I'm from the south. But I keep on telling them, let the best brain run. So in my submission, if I'm going there to do my will, if it's not the will of God, God should not let me get there. That is why I'm very sure. 
that in six months of my raid in Ondo State, Nigerians will be looking for me. I'm very sure of what I'm saying. I know what to do. It's not rocket science. Well, fair enough. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Otumba Bamidele Akinboye, the Ondo State PDP governorship aspirant. All the best. <laughs>